Hello again. In this video, we are going to derive the energies for the pi conjugated system in butadiene using simple Huckel theory. Note that the important features of this structure from the point of view of Huckel theory is that atoms 1 and 2 are connected, 2 and 3 are connected, 3 and 4 are connected, but 1 and 3 are not connected, 1 and 4 are not connected, and 2 and 4 are not connected. We can therefore write down the appropriate secular determinant for this structure. Again, as before, we're going to make the substitution that x is going to be equal to this expression alpha minus the energy divided by beta. And if we do that, this transforms this particular determinant equation into the following x1, 0, 0, 1, x1, 0, 0, 1, x1. 0, 0, 1, x is all equal to 0. Continuing our method, we want to solve for x. To do that, we need to evaluate this 4 by 4 determinant. The technique that we have available for determinants that's greater in size than 2 by 2 is to use the technique of expansion by minors. So we take the first column and the entries in the first column become the coefficient in our expansion. So our first coefficient is x. And this multiplies what will now be a 3 by 3 determinant that's formed by removing the first column and the first row. So the resulting 3 by 3 determinant we see starts here is x1, 0, 1, x1, 0, 1, x. The second term we get by using the 1 as our coefficient. Recall that the coefficients alternate in sign, so we need a minus 1. And again, it's going to multiply by a 3 by 3 determinant formed by removing the first column and now the second row. So we have 1, 0, 0, 1, x, 1, 0, 1, x. Equal to 0. Next, we ha still have 3 by 3 determinants, which we cannot evaluate directly. So we have to also expand those by, by minors. Our x coefficient in front. So now the coefficient that's appropriate is this x. And it's going to multiply by the resulting determinant we get by removing the first column and the second row. And first column and first row. So that leaves x1, 1x. Coefficient is x, and then the resulting matrix is going to be x1, 1x. And then our second coefficient is going to be the minus 1, 1, 0, 1x. One, so in orange, we have here the expansion by minors of the terms we have in orange there. And then in blue, we can evaluate this particular expression. Now here, a trick is useful. 
we notice that we can always use either the first column or the first row. But in the case of using the first row here, there's only one non-zero entry. So that simplifies the amount of work that we have to do. So we will use the one first as our coefficient. The resulting two by two matrix that multiplies it is x11x. One, one x. So we can put that down. And then we notice that the other two coefficients are zero. So since anything multiplied by zero is zero, we can actually stop at that point. And now we have a further simplified expression for our determinant equation. Now that we have reduced our determinants down to two by two determinants, we can use the definition of the determinant for a two by two case to immediately evaluate these expressions. So we get this particular two by two determinant has is x times x minus one times one. So that is x squared minus one. For this particular two by two determinant, we have one times x, which is x, minus one times zero, so this reduces simply to x. For the blue expression here, we have minus one in the front, x times x, minus one times one is again just x squared minus one. And this is all equal to zero. Evaluating what is inside the brackets here, we have x cubed minus x minus x. Then continuing to the part that's in blue, that gives us minus one times x squared minus one. The left-hand side, since we realize that x cubed minus x minus x is just x cubed minus 2x, so we can simplify that down to be x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1 times x squared is another x squared minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. Equals 0. We can combine the x squared terms to get that x to the fourth minus 3x cubed, 3x squared, plus 1 is equal to 0. There are several techniques to solve this type of a quartic equation, but one technique that might be useful is to notice that we only have even powers of x. So that suggests the following substitution that we can let y equal x squared. And if we make this substitution, it transforms our equation here to y squared minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. And we notice that now we have a quadratic equation and it can be solved by using the quadratic formula. We notice that a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 3, and c is equal to positive 1. So therefore the roots of this equation, we have negative b, so minus minus 3 is positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that gives us 9, minus 4ac, a is 1, c is 1, so minus 4, divided by 2 times a, which is 2. So this gives us 3 plus or minus the square root of 5, divided by 2. And if we evaluate this in terms of numerics, we get that y is equal to 
2.618 or 0 0.382. Now that gives us two roots because we are solving a quadratic equation here. It's quadratic in y. But ultimately, we want to solve for x. To do that, we need to substitute our values of y into this particular equation. And to solve for x, we simply take the square root of each side. So we take the, square, the positive and negative square roots of 2.618 and 0 0.382. And that gives us the following result, that the roots x are equal to plus or minus 1.618 and plus or minus 0 0.618. So we have four distinct roots for the quadratic equation that we found when we were trying to solve the 4x4 four four determinant equation using Huckel theory. Recall our first substitution where we let x equal alpha minus the energy divided by beta. So now we solve for the energies by back substitution and we get the following results. We get four distinct energies, the highest of which is going to be alpha minus 1.618 times beta, then alpha minus 0 0.618 beta, these are higher in energy because beta is a negative number. Then we have alpha plus 0 0.618 beta. And then the lowest possible is alpha plus 1.618 beta. So we're able to derive the energy levels for the molecular orbitals formed by the linear combination of atomic orbitals on the carbon atoms in the pi system for butadiene. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.